Hello everyone, back to Orthopedic Tutor. Today we are going to talk about ACL injury. Once again, I'm going to divide this into two sessions. The first session will discuss about the basics and diagnosis, while the second session will be regarding the management plan and post-management plan. So let's get it on. For the basics itself, epidemiologically, this condition is actually quite common amongst all those who injured their knees 40 to 50 percent of all ligament injuries are acl injuries while female athletes usually sustain more injury compared to the male because they have several different anatomical differences compared to the male <coughs> sorry for the landing biomechanics itself usually during the landing period Female athletes have more total valgus knee loading during the landing period and they usually land in a more erect position compared to the male counterparts. There's also an increased anterior shear force caused by the increased quadriceps to the hamstring strength. Right now, you need to remember that ACL resists anterior translation and therefore, due to the increased power of the quadriceps as opposed to the hamstring definitely there will be more anterior force on the knee and besides that female also has smaller notches smaller ligaments and also increased general laxity and in a summary you can you see it in this table here that there are several variants that make female slightly different than male Anatomically, all the BMI, the impingement due to the smaller notch and smaller ligaments play a huge role. Biomechanically, as I've mentioned before, the increase in knee valgus during loading, based on the neuromuscular aspect, there's also a lower hamstring or to quads ratio, or in other words, the quads are more dominant. On the hormonal side, there is also hormones that are changing every week, every month, that affects their coordination. And genetically, the collagen production is also slightly different. Now, we could see that ACL is frequently seen in high-risk sports. There are several sports that carries those high risks, include skiing, soccer, basketball, and football. Because some of these injuries, ACL injuries, are not only caused by the anterior force but also by the rotational force because ACL itself is a structure that does not only prevent anterior translation but it also acts as a secondary restraint to tibial rotation and varus or valgus rotation. Usually the ACL itself is also divided into two bundles the anteromedial bundles and the posterior lateral bundles. The way I memorize it is I remember the word A C L. So it starts with an A and ends with an L. So I go from AM to PL. Starts with anteromedial, ends with posterior lateral. The same goes when you're trying to memorize the PCL. The PCL contains also two bundles. So you start with an M, a with a sorry with a P, and you end with an L. So it goes from posterior medial to anterolateral. That way, you will never mix up those bundles. So, the anteromedial bundle is thought to be tightus in flexion and primarily res uh, responsible for restraining the anterior tibial translation, while the posterior bundle is more for the rotational stability. You need to get this concept of two ligaments inside the ACL or two bundles of ACL ligaments so that you know when uh, sorry which type of ligament you are testing during your physical exam because different physical exam examines different bundles of the ACL now there are some cases where the ACL is not torn all the way or also known as partial ACL tear now etiology wise the typical injury is almost foot in a fully extended knee which underwents 30 uh, which underwents valgus load along with internal tibial rotation and anterior tibial translation this is a typical injury and sometimes there are associated injury that may occur 
In acute injury, you could also find there will be injuries to the lateral meniscus, to the MCL, and also to the posterior ligamentous complex. While in chronic injury, you usually find injuries to the medial meniscus. Now, the classification, there are currently no good or sorry, not good. What I meant is there are currently no classification that is commonly used to classify an ACL injury. You usually just say that the tear is a complete tear or a partial tear, such as the one I've mentioned here. Okay, now for the diagnosis, there are several kinds of things you need to do before you are able to raise a diagnosis of ACL and those includes first and foremost a history taking. While in exam questions you'll frequently find in the vignette that the word audible pop is frequently mentioned and usually those are the keywords to ident to let you know that you are facing a case of ACL tear. Usually during the history taking you will find that the patient was doing a non-contact sports pivot there will be a pivoting injury or rotational force around the leg there will also be a pain an immediate swelling followed by hematrosis and there will be instability of the knee sometimes patients are still able to weight bear on bear weight on their affected limb but sometimes patients are not able to ambulate anymore now for the physical findings you can see starting from the gate the patient will sometimes still walk uh, in acute case with quadriceps avoidance gait because they would like to avoid active knee extension as you recall activation of quadriceps brings anterior translation force on the knee and therefore it will exacerbate any deformity so the patient will try to avoid that there will also be a fusion on your physical findings and during your special test, you please be reminded that special tests are not to be done in acute cases because these tests will induce pain, induce discomfort and you will do more harm in your patient. So in acute case, what you can do is you can take a good history taking, you can palpate around the knee to find any associated injuries but no special tests. Special tests are for chronic cases and cases where there is no longer pain, no longer any more swelling and you're not doing any harm. So there are a few tests that could be done and I'm only going to mention two here and these are very good tests which are called the Lachman test and is considered the most sensitive test but in the Lachman test you need to know that there are also certain grades starting from grade 1, grade 2 and grade 3 judging from the amount of anterior translation that occur. You need to learn about physical examination and the best way I think to do it is by looking at videos of people doing it and I would suggest that you log into the YouTube channel and take a look at the channel posted by the videos posted by the YouTube channel called Physio Tutor. They have loads of physical exam videos that are very good, very precise, and you can learn more there. Now, as I've mentioned before, that there are certain bundles of ACL that are tested by certain tests and other tests that are and any tests that are testing the anteromedial bundles, usually the test is performed by giving an anterior type of force on the leg while stabilizing the thigh. Those tests include the anterior drawer test and Lachman test. And there are certain tests that rotates the limb or the lower or the leg while stabilizing the thigh. And those rotational type of tests usually test the posterior posterior medial bundles which resist rotation now one of those tests that are frequently used is the pivot shift test and it is best correlated with ACL outcome now once knowing how to do a proper history taking and physical findings you will need additional examination to help confirm your diagnosis and that includes giving a plain radiograph and also MRI now a lot of you might think that plain radiograph plays no role because ACL is not seen on plain radiograph but that is not true because plain radiograph may reveal indirect signs that 
and ACL tear has occurred. First would be second fracture. You could see here that this is a uh, the insertion site of the anterolateral capsule and you can see anterolateral ligament solidity and during the ACL injury due to the high force of injury there could be an avulsion of this ligament along with a chip of the bone here as you can see at the lateral aspect of the tibia I'm going to zoom this in there you go this is the arrow and this is the second fracture the second sign would be the deep sulcus terminally sign and it is a depression on the lateral femoral condyle uh, at the area the junction between the weight bearing tibial articular surface and the patella articular surface on the femoral condyle you can see that this is the patella articulating surface and this is the tibia articulating surface at the era area there at the junction no area there could be a depression at the femoral condyle and this is due to the posteriorly displaced displaced femoral compared to the anteriorly displaced tibia and the posterior part of the tibia actually hits the femoral condyle causing this notch during the time of the injury and the last would be the posterior tibial slope because you need to evaluate for this posterior tibial slope this one this slope if the patient has a value of more than 13 degree then you, the ACL is likely to fail now the gold standard of determining MRI uh, determining an ACL tear is definitely MRI you it is a diagnostic test because you are going to evaluate the soft tissue really well and you can see here there are various signs that you can find the first would be the disruption of the ACL fiber that should have been here but it's no longer here and the second would be to find that the fibers to be not parallel to the Blumen Sart line. You can see there the yellow one, this is a Blumen Sart line. And this is the ACL fiber, this dark one here. And you can see here that this is no longer parallel to the Blumen Sart line. And next, you can see that you are unable to visualize the ACL anymore because frankly it's not there so you're not able to see it anymore and there could also be an empty lateral wall or empty notch sign you can see that this is only fluid here with the increased signal but no longer any visualization of any sorts of fibers crossing through here and then there could also be bone bruise now bone bruise is usually very specific for the ACL if the location is over at the posterior lateral aspect of tibia and at the lateral femoral condyle which is as depicted here and this could occur due to the time of injury when the tibia is anteriorly directed in relative to the femoral condyle this posterior lateral part of the tibia actually hits the femoral condyle and due to the impact there could be sulcal sign here at the plane x-ray and there could also be bone bruise at these two specific areas and that is what you're looking for when you're evaluating an MRI to look for any sorts of ACL injury I hope you enjoyed this video be sure to log in and watch the second part of the ACL injury video and don't forget to subscribe this channel it's orthopedic tutor thank you